Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. We know that in November of 1945, Dumbledore achieved the impossible by defeating the notorious and elder wonder wielding dark wizard at large, Gellert Grindelwald. For decades, Grindelwald has been building his following and spreading his poisonous ideologies, disrupting the wizarding world in a way unlike any other wizard before. His goal was simple, to establish a new world order where wizards would reign supreme over muggles. His ideologies promoted segregation, discrimination, and violence, instilling fear and chaos in the eyes of many, and for a long time it looked as though Grindelwald's twisted perspectives were gaining traction. That is, until Albus Dumbledore stepped in. We also know that Dumbledore defeated Grindelwald in a duel of legendary proportions that is widely perceived to have been the most legendary duel of all wizarding history. They say still that no wizarding duel ever matched that between Dumbledore and Grindelwald in 1945. Those who witnessed it have written of the terror and the awe they felt as they watched these two extraordinary wizards do battle. Dumbledore's triumph and its consequences for the wizarding world are considered a turning point in magical history. But one question that's never quite been properly answered by the history books is how? How did Dumbledore defeat Grindelwald? For the most part, the two men were considered to be wizarding equals. Grindelwald was a touch older than Albus, and in their youth they were able to grow powerful together, freely sharing their wizarding knowledge with one another and achieving things thought previously impossible in the realm of magic. The only difference was, Grindelwald possessed the Elder Wand, a legendary magical artifact and the most powerful wand ever made, capable of making any wizard even more powerful, granting them unparalleled magical abilities. Bearing all of this in mind, today we're going to be taking a closer look at Dumbledore and Grindelwald's coveted duel, speculating on how Dumbledore was able to pull off the impossible and defeat an Elder Wand wielding Dark Wizard. With a true master behind it, the Elder Wand was considered to be unbeatable, so just how did Dumbledore pull it off? I've got five theories for you today, and I'm sure one of them has to be right, so let's dive in. The Cop Out The first theory, which I deem the Cop Out theory, is that Grindelwald, despite owning the Elder Wand, never became its true master. If we take a look back at how Grindelwald obtained the Wand, we can see that he did so in a cowardly manner stealing it from Miku Grigorovich in the night. Grigorovich burst into the room at the end of the passage, and his lantern illuminated what looked like a workshop. Wood shavings and gold gleamed in the swinging pool of light, and there on the window ledge sat perched, like a giant bird, a young man with golden hair. In the split second that the lantern's light illuminated him, Harry saw the delight upon his handsome face. Then the intruder shot a stunning spell from his wand, and jumped neatly backward out of the window, with a crow of laughter. The theory is this, because Grindelwald stole the wand in a cowardly fashion, he was never its true owner. This means that for years and years, even though it was not in his possession, Miku Grigorovich was the true owner of the Elder Wand, that is until 1945, or perhaps 1944, when Dumbledore clued in, confronted Grigorovich, and disarmed Grigorovich in a non-fatal duel, effectively besting the wand's previous master, and becoming the one's new owner. This is precisely why Grindelwald said to Voldemort, with regards to the Elder Wand, I never had it. This statement, put through the lens of this theory, translates to, I never really won its allegiance. Grindelwald also taunts Voldemort and explains that he will never own the wand. Kill me then, Voldemort. I welcome death, but my death will not bring you what you seek. There is so much you do not understand. Kill me then. You will not win. You cannot win. That wand will never, ever be yours. And I suppose this passage could support the theory even further. Because Grindelwald never even owned the Elder Wand, Dumbledore was able to easily best him in a duel. However, because neither wizard wanted to kill the other, it still ended up lasting quite a long time. I call this a cop-out because it's exactly the same way that Voldemort meets his end, false confidence in his perceived ownership of the Elder Wand. However, I suppose it's not such a bad theory, especially if you consider how Grindelwald acquired the wand in the first place. Legend versus Reality The assertion that the Elder Wand is an unbeatable magical artifact comes from legend. This is something that is often overlooked. The same can be said for the properties of the other Deathly Hallows. While the Cloak of Invisibility is not infallible, it is far superior to other invisibility cloaks. 
The Resurrection Stone cannot bring the dead back to life, but is closer to doing so than any other piece of magic. As for the Elder Wand, I think it's entirely possible that it's simply just a better wand, and not necessarily a surefire way of achieving magical excellency. I think that the Elder Wand is more in tune with its owner's intentions, emotion, and desired wand movement, granting greater power and lower instances of spell failure, but I certainly don't think it's unbeatable. On page 106 of the Tales of Beetle the Bard, we see Dumbledore's analysis of the tale of the three brothers, where Dumbledore, who is presumably an expert on the subject, states the following. What must strike any intelligent witch or wizard on studying the so-called history of the Elder Wand is that every man who claims to have owned it has insisted that it is unbeatable, when the known facts of its passage through many owners' hands demonstrate that it has not only been beaten hundreds of times, but that it also attracts trouble as Grumble the Grubby Goat attracted flies. If anyone is an expert on the true nature of the wand, then it's Dumbledore, and if the wand wasn't as powerful as legend stated, then it makes sense that Dumbledore would have been able to overpower a potentially overconfident Grindelwald. Love Love, a central theme in the Harry Potter story, plays a powerful role in the series. Is the reason that Harry is able to survive Voldemort's killing curse as a baby, and it was also a lack of love that caused Voldemort to turn out the way he did. It seems to be the great equalizer in the universe. So it's not totally out of the question to suggest that love played a role in Grindelwald and Dumbledore's duel, particularly if we consider the fact that they were in love in their youth. Love, a form of ancient magic, has been known to cause some unpredictable and incredibly powerful things to happen, but what impact did it have on their fateful duel? Hear me out. I think it's possible that it was Dumbledore's love for Grindelwald that disabled the one's potency. We know that Dumbledore never intended to kill Grindelwald, even during what is considered to be the greatest duel of all time. And while I can't say this for certain, I suspect that Grindelwald may have been doing the same. Neither man truly wanted to kill the other. They just had to duel because they represented the most powerful figures fighting for each side of this wizarding war. So perhaps the Elder Wand, which seems to be quite in tune with the caster's emotions and motivations, detected this lack of malicious intent, allowing love to fulfill its role and decrease the power of the Elder Wand just enough to result in a fairly even and non-lethal battle. But for this theory, you have to truly buy into the power of love in this series. It's perhaps a little cheesy, but I think it's got some merit. Surrender this is actually an in-universe theory put forward by one of the characters from the books and films, Rita Skeeter, and for that reason we simply have to look into it. In essence, the theory posits that Grindelwald surrendered the Elder Wand to Dumbledore, throwing in the towel before any duel even took place. The following excerpt comes from Skeeter's book, The Life and Lies of Albus Dumbledore. Oh, now, I'm glad you mentioned Grindelwald, says Skeeter with such a tantalizing smile. I'm afraid those who go dewy-eyed over Dumbledore's spectacular victory must brace themselves for a bombshell, or perhaps a dung bomb. Very dirty business indeed. All I'll say is, don't be so sure that there really was a spectacular duel of legend. After they've read my book, people may be forced to conclude that Grindelwald simply conjured a white handkerchief from the end of his wand and came quietly. In this passage, Skeeter makes quite the list of statements. The Dumbledore is a liar, that the duel never occurred, and that Grindelwald surrendered. This theory, coming from anyone else, would be thought-provoking. However, what we have to remember is that Skeeter hasn't historically been the most reliable source for information. In a 2007 wrap-up chat for Bloomsbury, Rowling gave a fairly frank assessment of Miss Skeeter's veracity. Is Rita Skeeter still reporting? Naturally, what could stop Rita? I imagine she immediately dashed off a biography of Harry after he defeated Voldemort. One quarter truth to three quarters rubbish. If one quarter of what Rita Skeeter writes is indeed truthful, then I suppose it is possible that her description of the duel is accurate. However, I'd wager against it. Outclassed. The last theory is in line with the theory mentioned earlier, suggesting that Dumbledore simply beat Grindelwald in a dueling context. However, it differs in that it does not undermine the power of the Elder Wand. The theory here is quite simple. Grindelwald was outclassed. Despite possessing a wand of truly epic proportions, Dumbledore was simply a more powerful wizard. Dumbledore was continually referred to as a magical prodigy in his youth, and all of the time that he spent with Grindelwald as a young man probably only made him even more powerful as he grew into adulthood. 
I would certainly consider Grindelwald to be one of the most powerful wizards of all time, but I think the ceiling for Dumbledore's power was just higher. I like to think of it like this. There have to be some sorts of limits on the potential power of magic, and because Dumbledore is the most powerful wizard on record, i.e. he has the highest demonstrated level of power, I would give him a score of 100 on a 0 to 100 scale. With all of the information available to us, I'd imagine that Grindelwald is more like an 85 that gets a jumped up to 95 when equipped with the Elder Wand. For some context, I'd probably put Voldemort at like a 90 on this same scale, San Elder Wand, but I'm just spitballing here. Therefore, Grindelwald, despite receiving a 10 point bump from the Elder Wand, still wasn't quite able to match the power of Dumbledore. The following passage supports this. Despite Grindelwald's mastery of the Elder Wand, Dumbledore had ultimately triumphed over Grindelwald due to being, in his own admission, a shade more skillful, thus becoming the master of the Elder Wand in the process. And on that note, that pretty much concludes my list of theories on how Dumbledore was able to finally best Grindelwald. What do you think of them? Which theory do you subscribe to? Let me know down in the comment section below. Also, if you enjoy the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and to forget to live.